George Vanderbilt was experimenting, and so he, he had asked his friend, and it was just some water, some short water, and I don't know what else, but he he told a friend of his who was in the room. It, he had one, one part of it in one room, and so he put it into another room, and then he his friend went in that room, and he was experimenting, and then he found a solution, and then he yelled right over that microphone, or whatever it's called, and uh, the that other man yelled back, and then he ran into that room and where Alexander Bell was and told him that he could hear him. So he kept on inventing, and finally he got the touch-tone telephone. <laughs> taking a, the handle of the, of the TV and knocking the metal out of him. And then he put him over there in a box. It's really neat how that operates. <laughs> yeah, help up there. The receivers are the telephone, regular telephone going in a machine. She put them around thing and then it go around until it get to that hole and drill a hole in the plastic and, and then all of, all the middle plastic come out and then she hanging up on the conveyor belt. And then she puts them back up on the conveyor belt. Drilling out the part where the caps are going to go. She's taking um, the telephones and she's putting them up to the machine, and then the extra plastic comes off, and and then she puts them on the on the um, conveyor belt. There's two conveyor belts going back and forth. One's going that way, and one's going this way. There's the trim lines. When it comes out of the mold, it's very hot, and you have to put it on a cooler, cool it off. She was cutting the rest of the extra plastic off of trim line the telephone, telephone, line telephone into the into these uh, plastic bags, so she can send them to the next lady, and then to the next, and then to the next. That's the housing of the telephones. They're taking the uh, housing out of a, a molding machine. He was cutting the extra plastic off the telephone. Like a big bug. <laughs> Looks like a porcupine to me. <laughs> a porcupine. 
Looks like a boat going down the river to me. Steamboat with wires on it. Looks like some great big beady eyes looking at you. <laughs> Looks like the inside of a telephone, it is. She's got all kinds of wires, and she has to take about a couple of every one and put them in the telephones. You have to have every one exactly in order, or it'll mess up the whole telephone. Yeah. It'll mess up the whole telephone. Very smart. And she takes blue ones, and red ones, and white ones, and brown ones, and black ones, and blue ones, and gray ones. The part that has curves on it, well, that's called the circuit. It looks like a bunch of highway veins or something. They put pieces of cardboard on them, and on top of them, and then they put uh, a lot of, uh, a big piece of metal with little squiggles in it. Sort of like, looks like it. This is a circuit for the touch-tone trimline and telephone. She's screwing them in with it. An electric screwdriver. With the electric screwdriver, they put push it down so it can fit in the touch tone. She's taking the telephones and she's testing them. Well, if the lights show up, she knows that the phone's okay. She was checking to see if the telephone would ring. Then she pokes something like a pencil in it and she sees if they're good enough if they're right or not. They're putting the cord through the handle part of the 500. Then they're putting the caps on. So you can hear and talk. Uh-huh. Looks like a snake <laughs> with little bristly spines on it. Burly worm. Looks sort of like a camel with a big bag on his back. They're putting uh, the dials on two sticks where they can test them. That man was letting me help him. And they just slide on. Putting the dials on there and they're screwing them on. She takes them and, oh, she takes them and works at them. They're putting his screws in the, in the bell and using an electric hammer to push them down. She's pushing the nails inside the part of the pill. She's part. screwing the screws in with the electric screwer so they'll stay in. Those ringers look like a two lines of a lobster. They screw the dial on, then they send it on down the line, and then they got this, um, they got the receiver there, and then they put the um, cord on, then they put the base on, then they test it, see if it works, and then they put it to the box. And... Then it goes to the boxing, boxing part of Western Electric. And they send it on a, like, conveyor line for boxes, only it's like a roller coaster.
and then they go down to the basement someplace, put them in great big stacks, and then somebody puts them in a truck and takes them down to their telephone company. The trim line telephone is painted blue, yellow, pink, or green, whichever color that you prefer. She's calling up her boyfriend! Mm -hmm. Oh, she's calling up her boyfriend. Well, at one time, Carol called up Superman. And it went for Western Electric, nobody would have telephone. He's calling up his girlfriend, too. No. I hate girls. I hate girls, too, because they always get people into trouble. Man, they really call, don't they? Yeah, I don't know how ever the first man made a telephone, but he did, and I think it's wise. Uh, lots of people, anybody around in the United States, they use the telephone for emergencies and um, law offices use them and the police use them and uh, the hospitals use them and the schools use them and um, parents use them to call friends and um, oh, lots of others use them too. Yeah, help up there.